Uh, thanks, and here's Anne. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Well, it's great to be back in Honolulu. I was here last in August, and uh, since then, uh, you know, there's been a, a seismic change in activism. Uh, starting in, in late September, early October, all of a sudden things started happening that all of us were just shocked about. That people were coming together first in New York City and Zuccotti Park, all of a sudden arriving and having morning, noon, night marches on Wall Street and more and more people started flowing in there. And then in Washington, D.C., uh, uh, two uh, uh, mobilization started, one that had been planned for over six months. That was the one that Freedom Plaza, the one that started out being called Stop the Machine, um, modeled on the old time model of organizations getting together saying, we need to have a mobilization and let's see how long it can last for and groups putting their efforts and their money behind it and having a big stage and a square that turned out to be, you know, the dinosaur model. It was not what the world uh, wanted what the people who wanted action against corporate greed, against you, know, you name it, they didn't want that model. They wanted a model where every single person that came to an event had an opportunity to speak. And as we saw with the General Assembly concept, all of a sudden there really was a true grassroots democratic movement that was going on in, as Carolyn's article mentioned, over a thousand places in the United States. And movements that, that uh, groups of people in these thousand places that came together spontaneously and started their own communities. It was it, it is amazing. It is truly amazing. And it's not just one crowd. It's not just the anti-war crowd. It's not just the stop the torture crowd. It's just not you know the things that have been organized on specific issues before. Uh, it, it wasn't that. It was a broad, broad look at what our society had become and the challenge for it. I happened to be in Washington with the uh, Stop the Machine movement, uh, trying to put, get that thing together. And when all of a sudden, you know, 200 miles north, New York City exploded with Zuccotti Park. And so several of us went racing up there to see, you know, what's going on with this? And then rushed back down to get our stage in order and <laughs> to be ready to... Uh, host, uh, host, and that's really what it was, host uh, what we thought or hoped to be thousands of people. And indeed, thousands came, not tens of thousands, but thousands did come. And for a week in Washington, D.C., we had all sorts of activities throughout the city, of, at the Chamber of Commerce, at, at all of the K Street places, at the drone exhibit, at the Smithsonian, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as that was happening throughout the country then, all sorts of towns started springing up. And from there to go back to New York and then up to Boston for the very first day of Occupy Boston and then on up to Portland, Maine for the first day of Portland, Maine. And just to see all of these things happening and talk to people who I had never met before. And I thought I knew a huge number of activists in our country. I mean, over the last nine years I've been speaking all over the country and I, I thought I knew them. Well, <laughs> I didn't. Because now we have uh, we have a incredible number of people who many of whom have never come out on the streets before, uh, who have not decided that they would they would have um, public protest as a part of their lives. But for whatever reason, and each one of you in the audience here will have your own specific reason of why either you're continuing your activism through Occupy. Honolulu or whatever, or uh, or the the new people of exactly what it was that brought you out, that that you are now becoming uh, have become active in trying to challenge the system and to mobilize our fellow citizens to get off their behinds and let's get moving and really try to straighten out what uh, what our country is, so that so that the people of our country benefit from from what we have, not just the political elite and the economic elite, but everybody has, a, has an opportunity in our society. Um, I have visited uh, all up and down the East Coast. I've been in the Midwest. I've been out on the West Coast. And I haven't spent a long time uh, at any one Occupy. Uh, but dropping in to get to meet people, see, what, see what's going on, and 
continue my speaking of, uh, on various specific issues is really kind of what I've seen my role kind of becoming. Um, I would like to express my admiration for everyone who's taken the time that they stay put in, in an occupation and they are the foundation. They are the, the people that are there day in and day out. They're the ones that, that are there for the General Assembly. <coughs> for the general assembly set and last forever. I mean, <laughs> this has been a real <laughs> a real credit to the patience and perseverance and tolerance uh, of people for other people. And listening to people that normally you would just walk out the door. I don't want to hear this stuff. I don't want to hear it anymore. And yet we now seem to uh, in most cases people will kind of choke down that that uh, propensity to bolt when you when you start hearing stuff you don't really want to hear and settle in and it may be hours that you're settling in to listen to every person that wants to speak and having been in Zuccotti Park several times where there were thousands of people and seeing the lines and thinking oh my god this is, this won't be over by dawn and indeed it wasn't <laughs> and, and yet People kept coming back because they wanted to hear what's, what, what other people felt, and they wanted to be there when, by golly, it's time to vote. It's time to vote to see what we're going to do tomorrow, or sometimes it was today. It's dawn, and so we got to make a decision on what we're going to do today. And that model, uh, it's not really good to call anything a model, but that type of um, of experience was was being replicated in so many places across our country that people were being tolerant of others that they were that anybody that was going to be there to suffer through all of this you knew had a good heart and that they they were interested in the same types of things that that you were and the commonality of what I saw as I uh, was across the country of of the interests of the patience of the tolerance of the ability to try to work through the common problems that arose at every single one of the Occupy locations. The issues of, well, there's tents, there's this, there's that, there's food, and so who's going to show up? Some activists, but lots of people who've been on the streets for a long time, that the streets are their home, and they've got tents, and they've been needing a place to be where it's safer to be with other people, and they, for some reason, feel a little more comfortable with that group rather than other groups. So the issue of the homeless, the issue of people who are having mental instability that are out on the streets, uh, the issue of people that are hungry, that are in every single town, and they're hungry. And if there's a place that they can go and eat, they'll come and eat. And then how to organize all this, how to fundraise for it, how to get the donations, how to make sure everything's done in a transparent manner so that everybody that's sitting in the group every single night knows that nobody's stealing any money, that nobody's siphoning it off on their special projects, that indeed it's going to be a group decision on how we go about working for whatever uh, specific uh, project it is for that day or that week or whatever.